In this video, we will be talking about many-to-many -many relationships that can exist between data in an organization. Several times in an organization, one might have entities or tables that have many-to-many -many relationships. What is an example of a many-to-many -many relationship, you might ask? Take, for instance, a store that sells products store such as Walmart. This store has many products such as for instance brown rice or kidney beans or tomatoes or any sort of consumable. It has many specific instances of this consumable. Now customers come into stores and go ahead and purchase these products. Customers purchase many such products and such products might be purchased by many customers. That is an example of a many-to-many -many relationship where a customer can purchase many products and a product can be purchased by many customers. That's an example of a many-to-many -many relationship between two entities. Another example of a similar relationship not specifically related to a store, is your experience at a university. Students at a university enroll in many courses. For instance, the course you might be taking right now. You might be taking many courses right now. Each course, however, can be taken by many students. And so, student and course have a many-to-many -many relationship. One student can take many courses and one course can have many students part of it. That is another example of a many-to-many -many relationship between two entities. Information about a many-to-many -many relationship is captured in a specific way. It is captured in a third entity to map the many-to-many -many relationship. This entity, this third entity, is known as an associative entity. An associative entity has two foreign keys. It has foreign keys from the one side of both other entities. To represent the many-to-many -many relationship, one has to create a third entity. This third entity is considered an associative entity. And this associative entity captures data about the many-to-many -many relationship between the two entities. In our previous example about customers ha buying products or sales having products, one can think about a sale having many items and an item being on many sales. The receipt captures this. This receipt is a sale. Each sale has many items. One can take a look at brown rice, rice vinegar, baked beans. Each of these are items. Now, these items can be on many sales receipts. And so, a sale has many items and an item can have, can be on many sales receipts. This relationship is present and captured in line items where each line item captures information about the item and the sale that it's present on. Sale can occur multiple times in the line item table as a foreign key. So sale number shows up multiple times in line item as a foreign key and item number shows up multiple times in line item as a foreign key. Let us discuss why we might need a third entity to store data about the many-to-many -many relationship. And let us consider the example of students taking courses. For instance, if you have a student table, a student table has a primary key student ID, and so that would be student ID, an F name, an L name, and let's say, for instance, a major. This represents a student and a student has four attributes. Let's have 
another entity called course. The primary key for the course could be the CRN for the course. It has a few attributes, the name for the course, the semester the course is offered, and for instance, let's say the timing when the course runs. CRN and student ID are the primary keys of course and student respectively. Now, a student can take many courses and that would suggest there needs to be a one-to-many relationship between a student and a course and we can represent that one-to-many relationship for instance and this would imply that in the table course we have a foreign key and the foreign key for that relationship would be student ID A student takes many courses, that would imply the primary key student ID enters the course table as a foreign key and so there'd be multiple values for student ID corresponding to a course. But we also know that a course has many students. Because a course has many students, we, have, we could also have a one-to-many relationship going the other way. And in this case, for the one-to-many relationship corresponding to the red line, of course, having many students, the foreign key would be CRN in the student table. Now, this is, in fact, problematic. And the reason this is problematic is I want to remind you all of the referential integrity constraint. The referential integrity constraint states that for a foreign key to exist, there needs to be first corresponding primary key values. In this case, when we are making the student table and we create a column CRN, which is a foreign key, we would first need the course table to exist and the primary key CRN to exist. The other way around, when we are making the course table, we would need the f and, and try to make a foreign key student ID, which refers to uh, the student ID in the student table, we would need the student table to exist a priori. And so the problem becomes, there is a chicken and egg issue. Which table should be built first? Because they both have form keys that refer to the primary keys of the other entities. To solve this problem, we get rid of the foreign keys in both these entities. And so we don't, in fact, have student ID and CRN in course and student. In this case, we would have a third entity. This third entity, we can give it any name really, but let's consider it enrollment. In this enrollment entity, we would say a student has many enrollments. A student enrolls many times and a course has many enrollments. Each enrollment is about a certain course and each enrollment is about a certain student. The enrollment entity would have two foreign keys. There'd be two foreign keys in enrollment, one for student ID and another one for CRN which corresponds to the primary key of a course. And so there are two foreign keys in enrollment and student ID can occur multiple times in enrollment and CRN can occur multiple times in enrollment and this captures the many-to-many -many relationship between a student and a course. Now, the more important question is, well, if those two attributes are the foreign keys, what would be the primary keys? of enrollment. Obviously, we can give this entity its own primary key, such as an enrollment ID. That's the primary key of enrollment. Now, we don't actually have to give enrollment its own primary key. We can use student ID and CRN as well. If we don't have enrollment ID as its own primary key, one option is to make student ID and CRN as 
a composite primary key. A composite primary key is when we have multiple attributes combined together to create a primary key. In this case, student ID and CRN will combine together to be a composite primary key. Since a student can take a course once, that would suggest that student ID and CRN together form a composite primary key for the enrollment table. When the primary key on the one side of the relationship is part of a composite primary key on the many side of the relationship, on the many side of the relationship, you have to add a symbol. And that symbol is this plus notation. That plus notation tells us that the primary key on the one side of the relationship is part of a composite primary key on the many side of the relationship. When you have such a relationship, this relationship is known as an identifying relationship. In traditional data modeling, this type of relationship is denoted by a plus sign on top of the relationship.